Okay, well, I think uh, it's about time to start. Uh, I just wanted to open up and say thanks to all of our sponsors this year. Good morning, Vienna. Uh, also, please be kind to each other. We have this uh, anti-harassment policy, which everyone probably should have agreed to. Um, which should be next. Uh, I can't advance the slides. This was working. Take presenter. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, please uh, just take a minute to review the um, code of conduct, anti harassment policy. Uh, everybody be nice to each other and enjoy yourselves. Uh, and I'll hand it over to Gustavo, who's our first speaker. So, there we are. There you go. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks. Okay. Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to, to my talk. Thanks for thanks for coming to my talk. Um, well, I'm going to be talking about um, this new compiler option uh, that we are trying to enable uh, as part of our efforts in the kernel self-protection project. So we are trying to enable this compiler option in, in mainline. So, well, my name is Gustavo, and my work in the kernel community has always been supported by the Linux Foundation and recently by Alpha Omega. Okay, this is the agenda for today. We are going to start explaining uh, quickly um, what is a flexible array member, why they are um, important, and well, what is this uh, new compiler option. Then we are going to explain, well, a little bit about uh, the strategies I am following to address uh, thousands of these issues, uh, of these warnings in the Linux kernel. And of course, at the end, some conclusions. Okay, first, um, as a quick review of a flexible array member, it's merely, uh, well, it's, uh, this is a C99 flexible array member, and it should be, whenever we need to use a flexible array member, it should be at the end of, uh, of a structure, right? So in this case, we have struct flex, merely to, um, uh, this means that this is a flexible structure because contains, it contains a flexible array member. The extended uh, review of uh, flexible array members is that when we use a flexible array member, uh, usually we have to, uh, to add uh, a counter member to the containing structure. So this counter member is going to be used to, uh, to store the total number of items or elements our flexible array member is going to contain at some point at runtime. And well, we also have uh, the new shiny compiler attribute, uh, counted by. Uh, through which we can annotate our flexible array members. So with this, we have a way to link uh, our flexible array member with this counter so that we can gain runtime bounce checking coverage on these arrays. And well, this, um, the flex array member not at any compiler option uh, was uh, released, was developed by Qin Shao. I'm sure she's here. Well, she's coming probably. Uh, it was released in GCC 14. And well, this is um, what this compiler option warns about. It's going to, when we enable this compiler option, uh, the compiler is going to complain when we, uh, when it detects that we have a flexible structure in the middle of another structure. So in this case, we have a, a stroke flex, which contains a flexible array member, and it's in the middle of composite structure. So that's, uh, that's the issue. And that is, that, and that is what, we, what we want to fix. Okay, so the challenges of uh, enabling this compiler option in mainline. First, uh, well, what's wrong with flexible array members in the middle? Um, another important characteristic of a flexible array member, which is part of the language, is part of the standard, is that a flexible structure cannot be a member of another structure, right? However, this is allowed as, a, as, a, as an extension to the language, so we can have uh, a composite structure that includes a flexible structure. So um, that, that flexible structure, that member uh, of the composite structure can be either the last member in the, in the composite structure or not the last member. So in this case, it's a, it's a, it's a member in the middle, right? Um, 
this this last part of the of the extension is is deprecated. So this is what uh, again what we are trying to uh, to fix. We try to we, we are going to we are trying to prevent flexible array members in the middle of uh, a number of nested structures. Um, the the reason for this is because the the reason for this is because the compilers uh, get confused and they they don't um, they don't treat they don't treat these uh, flexible array members in the middle consistently. So sometimes uh, they get confused about the sizes of structures and the sizes of uh, of these uh, of these flexible arrays. Um, before we continue, I would like to go quickly through a bit history of how is that we, we, we got to this point where we have thousands of these issues in the Linux kernel. So back in 2019, uh, we, we discovered uh, what at the time was an eight-year-old bug. And with that, uh, by fixing that bug, we started the efforts of uh, doing flexible array transformations across the whole kernel tree. So basically what was happening at the time, what was happening at the, t at the time is that we had um, a zero length array in the middle of the structure, and this array was being used as a flexible array member at runtime. So it was overriding the, the following adjacent member in its containing structure. So that was an issue that was a bug. We fixed it by transforming this zero length array into a flexible array member, and of course, placing the flexible array member at the end of, uh, of the structure. Oh, actually, Ken is there, yeah. <laughs> okay, so well, this, this effort of looking for one element arrays and zero length arrays, which we call fake flexible arrays, uh, has taken us five years. Um, it, it was not a, a simple task. And we, we could probably have a couple of stranders here and there, but uh, that work is basically done. Then, uh, while we were uh, addressing these issues, uh, we noticed something quite strange, uh, how compilers were treating trailing arrays. Um, they were, what we discovered is that they were treating any trailing arrays of any, of any size as if they were flexible array members. This is, uh, the compiler cannot properly reason about the sizes of, uh, of these trailing arrays, even when they had a, a, a concrete size at compile time. So that was an issue, that was a problem, that um, the compiler, on the compiler side, that had to be fixed, and well, basically they fix uh, building object size and building dynamic object size because at the time um, the workhorse for the 45 version of main copy was uh, building object size. So, so yeah, that, that had to be fixed. Also, um, a new compiler option was implemented, F strict flex arrays, and it was released in Clan 16 and in GCC uh, 13. We enabled this compiler option in, in Linux 6.5. Um, and we enable its strictest form, which is level value three, which means that only C99 flexible array members were, are going to be allowed as, uh, as objects of variable length or as a flexible array members uh, in the kernel. And so, well, this fixes the, the case of having uh, multiple different ways of declaring the same type of object, because, well, that was, uh, there, there were ambiguous declarations that were confusing the compiler about the sizes of objects. So, uh, so the 45 version of main copy um, could not sanity check a lot of those trailing arrays. So with this, uh, that is fixed, in, and well, now we have uh, the new counted by attribute, and this was uh, recently released in Clang 18, and is uh, currently under development and, and is likely to be released in GCC 15. It's already it's already out. Oh, awesome! It's already out. Great. Okay. So, yeah. Well, um, with this uh, with this with this attribute, now we have been annotating all the flexible array members we have in the Linux kernel. That, um, that we can associate with, ad with an other member in its containing structure, uh, and, and, and that member is going to be the counter for the total number of elements or, or array. So ideally, every flexible array member in the kernel should be annotated, because otherwise uh, we, we won't be able to determine its size and add bounds checking coverage at runtime. So, so yeah, that's, that's the ideal scenario. Of course, that is not always the case, but when that is the case, when we can annotate them, we are doing that. Okay, now, uh, when, I, when I first started working on this, on this problem, uh, I, I built my kernel and, and, and I ran into uh, more than 60,000 of these warnings, of these uh, 
flex array member not at the end uh, issues. Was quite uh, was quite frustrating to me at the time because obviously I was doing other stuff and um, and all of a sudden I I ran into the task of having to address this this problem and, and yeah I um, at the end of the day when I was looking into them and I was ordering and sorting all these warnings uh, it turns out that only about one percent of them are unique warnings. But of course, we have uh, uh, these issues maybe in, in, in hundreds of headers, and that's the reason why we have so many warnings, right? Um, the, most of these warnings, of course, are, are false positives, but um, I have fixed uh, a few issues, actual bugs in the kernel, and so this compiler option is, is valuable, and, and we would like to, to enable this in mainline. So, what I was doing at the time, I, I had to read uh, some of those hundreds of unique uh, issues, trying to find um, a way to, to, fix, to fix that, right? So I, I tried to determine if there were some general cases that I could address. And well, what turned, it turns out that some patterns started to emerge. And well, we are going to see um, what are those. I basically classified all those different uh, issues into four main categories, and we are going to see case by case. So, in the first case, uh, the first case is, is the is the is the simple, the, the easiest one, is when the flexible array member is is never used, is not used at all anywhere in the code, right? So, that's a simple fix. Uh, we just need to remove uh, the, the flexible array declaration, and that's it. Um, with this patch, well, this, this is part of, uh, of the patch. Actually, in this commit, in this commit, I, I removed like a four or five of these instances, and, um, and, and yeah, I fixed uh, a few of those uh, unique warnings. Unfortunately, I think I have run into just like a couple of these issues in the kernel. So. But yeah, that's one, that's one type, that's one category. In the second case, the flexible array member is never accessed through the composite structure. This means that maybe the rest of the members in the flexible structure are going to be uh, accessed through the composite structure, but not the flexible array member, right? So in this case, um, we are doing something with, uh, with member A and member B, and we are accessing this through the middle object, right? But um, we, we might probably access even count, but we never access the flexible array member. Yes. And what about the fields that are after the flex? How can they be accessed if the size is not... Uh, the fields that are after what? After, after the flex middle in the composite type, if there are more fields following this, how, how can they be even accessed if it's not known? No, but uh, we have no issue with that. I mean, uh, they might. I only know one example, and in that case, it's like either one or zero. Like uh, it wasn't. It was flexible, but it was like within the. Either one or zero. So. Okay, but 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 what do you mean? I mean, you you are asking a flexible array in the middle of an array. In the middle of an array. Which is what you have there. Stroke. Oh no, it's a stroke. Okay, but I've seen it. <laughs> so oh. Seen it. oh yeah, well yeah. yeah. I mean, but yeah. Okay, okay. So, but in this case, I mean, if you want to access a, any member following the the middle flex. Um, here there is no issue because, uh, at least in this example, the example that, I, that I'm trying to show is that um, I'm trying to exemplify that the flexible array member is never actually used through the composite structure. It can be used in other instances of code, of course, and you can allocate heap space for, for the flexible structure and the flexible array, but it's never used through the composite structure, right? So it doesn't affect how you access the, the following members after the middle, the middle object. Okay. 
Okay, well, in this case that um, in which we have a flexible array member uh, and the, and the, the compiler is complaining about this flexible array member, but uh, we never actually use it through the composite structure, the question is how can we address this problem? How can we fix this issue? We cannot simply just remove the flexible array because it's going to be used by other instances of code, right? Okay, one solution is, um, is to have a couple of structures. I mean, the original flexible structure and just creating a, a completely separate structure with the rest of the members of the flexible structure, but uh, with a, except, the, except, except the flexible array member, right? So that's what I, what I have here. We have stroke flex, which is the flexible structure, and flex header is basically the header part of the flexible structure, right? So that's, uh, that's something we could do. And, and well, then we just need to replace uh, the flexible structure instead of, instead of declaring middle as, uh, as, as an object of the type of, a st of stroke flex, it's going to be an object of the type of flex header. Oh, I'm, I'm seeing something different here. So for this case, uh then you separate the flexible array at the its count field, right? I, I remember this uh, in the original. Could you? Yeah. So in the flex structure flex, there's a size count. Is that when you later will treat it as a counted by for the flexible array? Not. Yes, yes, because it's annotated uh, for... But you separated them into two different structures. Oh, oh, yeah, but, uh, I mean... Yeah. No, 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 I mean, I created a new structure. I but mean... You, you created a new structure, but these two fields, the count and uh -huh. the FA, FAM, these two fields were separated into two different structures. No, no, no. It, 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 let's say it's a new structure. It's different. I mean, this this count, the count in flex header, let's say that has nothing to do uh, with the count in in stroke flex. It's not okay. Yeah, it's not it's not related. It's just okay. we are duplicating, and, th and this is the issue uh, that with this approach we are duplicating a lot of code, and uh, I'm going to show why this is not ideal. So, <laughs> okay, um, yeah, let's, let's. Oh, this is a mess now. Okay. Okay. Well. So. So. Yeah. I mean, the, the issue with this approach is that we are duplicating a lot of code. So uh, that's a problem because, well, uh, maintainers uh, will need to. Well, uh, we, need, we need to maintain two independent but basically identical structures, right? And and that's not ideal for 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 no one, for anyone, right? So that's not the right solution, of course. And that's not the solution I, I am using. No doubt there'll also be promiscuous casting between them, which seems worrisome. Yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> okay. Well, the solution I, I am proposing is uh, is to use the family, the stroke group family of helpers, and um, with this, what we can do. Well, if you don't know about these helpers, they are they are quite versatile. Um, basically, inside this helper, we have a union with a couple uh, of structures. One of them, an anonymous structure, and the other is a name structure. And with this, we can magically access uh, the members of the group directly without having to use the identifier of the group. So, okay, so this is an example of how I would address this issue using the stroke group helper. What happens here is that we create, we basically create a new stroke tag, and instead of duplicating uh, instead of having two separate structures, we are, uh, we are grouping those members that are going to be accessed through the composite structure in a new struct tag. In this case, was uh, flex header is the new struct tag, and we just replace the, the type of, uh, of, of the conflicting middle object from struct flex to struct flex header. Right, and uh, and with that we avoid having to duplicate uh, structures, and we are basically uh, getting the flexible array member out of the game. So the compiler is not long is no longer going to be able to to see this flexible array member because it's not there anymore. Yes. Yeah. So the question is here. So now the count counted by count 
will be they are not in the same structure anymore. But but it is in an anonymous structure too. Because the street group helper uh, contains in a union we have an anonymous structure and a name structure. I guess it conflicts if instead it would be a substructure. But now TCC, I don't, I don't think TCC support it right now. So if, if the count from my understanding, the structure group target, that's a union, right? Is that a union? Yeah, it's a union, and, and then in the union we have an anonymous structure, uh -huh. and then we have a name structure. Yeah, I know, but the, the count and the flexible array, FAM, they are not in the same structure anymore. It's in... Yeah, but the count is in an anonymous structure, so you don't support that? I think you do support that, right? Oh, okay. That is supported. What is not supported is when it is a, a name structure. Okay, okay, that should be fine, that should be fine. Yeah, great, thanks. Okay, well, this, is, um, this would be the solution for this, uh, for this source of issues. So instead of, again, instead of duplicating the code, we just uh, use the, the magic of through group. And well, we, can now, we now have a new, a new type, uh, struct flex header, and we can use that type to declare the, the middle object. And, and well, let's continue. This is, a, this is a patch, an actual patch in the kernel where, uh, where I, I was fixing one of these issues. And, and yeah, what I did was that I just grouped the rest of the members in the flexible structure uh, with, this, with the help of the struct group. And well, the flexible array member is I isolated because we, we don't need it for, this, uh, for, for these purposes. And in the, in the composite structure, I changed the type of the conflicting object to the newly created struct, um, um, the, new, the newly created struct tag, right? And well, that is that is the fix for for this category of issues. Again, let's remember: in this case, we we don't need to we don't need a flexible array member. So that is why this this approach is possible in this in this scenario. Okay, the case number three is uh, it's probably is the most interesting one. It's the most in most sort of complex one. In this case, what is going on is that um, we are going to have an implicit union between our flexible array member and a fixed size array, uh, which type is going to be the same element type of the flexible array. So that's what we have here. It's not working, okay. Yeah, if you notice, well, uh, our fixed array in the composite structure uh, is of the same element type as our flexible array member. So in the best scenario, of course, because uh, I, I ran into a couple of these issues where people were expecting uh, the flexible array member and the fixed size arrays to share the same address, but there were actually padding between them, so that's a bug. But in the best, in the best possible scenario, uh, those are going to be, uh, the intention of the developers are to, is to have an implicit uh, union between, between those arrays. So the idea of this, of this type of code is uh, people, they are allocating up front uh, enough space uh, for the flexible array member at runtime. So in these cases, they, they already know uh, how big the, the, the flexible array member is going to be. So they just, they just add a, a, a fixed size array of that size in a composite structure, right? Okay, so I, this, this, is a, this is a kernel patch. This is part of, of, uh, of a fix for, for one of these warnings. And, um, and well, I'm doing basically the same as in the previous case. I am grouping those uh, members of the flexible structure into, into a group with the help of true group. I am leaving, effectively leaving the flexible array member out of the equation. Now the compiler no longer sees the flexible array member, so it cannot complain about it. And well, we change the, the type of, uh, of the conflicting object from the type of a flexible structure to the newly created struct tag, right? So that is the newly created struct tag, and with that, well, the, the compiler um, is not going to see the, the flexible array member anymore. So the issue here in this, uh, in this case is that uh, there is a piece of code that is actually trying to access 
the flexor array member in this case. So contrary to, to case number two, where the flexor array member was not being used at all, uh, only the rest of the members, in this case, uh, they, they, they are trying to access the flexor array member. So how can we fix this if we just leave the flexor array member out of the game? Well, the trick is to use uh, container off. So uh, what we can do with container off is we can get uh, the address of the flexible structure. And with that address, now we can access the flexible array member. So let's see how this works. This is going to be a bit complex. Just bear with me. And this laptop is funny. OK. OK, let's see how this works. OK, well, here we have uh, our flexible structure. We have our composite structure. And we have the use of container of at the bottom, right? OK, let's go step by step. So yeah, first, uh, we have an object to the composite structure, right? We start with that. Then through that object, we can get a pointer to HDR, which HDR is the conflicted member, which now is, uh, has a new type, right? And this new type uh, doesn't contain the flexible array member. So we cannot access directly uh, the flexible array member through, through, through HDR in this case, right? However, as we created a new, a new struct tag, and this struct tag uh, also have a name, in this case, HDR is going to be the name of the new structure. Well, now we, we, we have everything we need to use a container of and to do the magic. So now we have, uh, we complete uh, the, uh, the, the arguments we need to use container of. We have a pointer uh, to, um, uh, to, to the conflicting object, which is now pointing to, to a different type, but this different type is, uh, well, is under a new name, which is header. It's a bit complex, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, we, can, we can get a, a pointer to the flexible structure through the newly created struct tag, right? Even when, we, when, when, we, when the flexible array member is no longer uh, part of that, of that new type. So that's, that's basically the trick. So we are getting a pointer to, to the flexible uh, structure. Yes. It looks like you're assuming that the, the, that the wrapping structure starts with the flexible array structure, because you're doing container of, right? Yes. And you have to you know, start with it while you have a reference to what's within it. But the, he's using container of to get the pointer to the start of the structure. Wouldn't you just want the pointer to the, all you have to do is cast the address of the header. Yeah, but we don't, we don't want to do that cast. Container provides you with a, a better sanity check on the cats. Yeah, I mean, cats, cats, cats are, are dangerous, so we, we don't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, actually, that, that, that's the first thing I tried, and, and, uh, but that's not the, the best solution. It, look, it seems like you're doing a cast anyhow, because... Yeah, a container of is the same as a cast. <laughs> well, we, might, we maybe should create a special one which says it's a zero, because that's a reoccurring cast. Up. A wrapper to container of, you mean? That we're doing first yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to do that, but Case doesn't want me to do that. So. <laughs> no, no. I, I, it's a reoccurring. There's a lot of code which takes container up and passes it to an error, uh, uh, pointer error, which to me, I look at that, I'm like, how does that work, right? Yeah. How are we storing the error pointer in a container up? You're, you're saying we have larger cases beyond the, the microphone. Yeah, that's a reoccurring pattern where oh, the container only works if it's the first element. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, in this case, but in this, well, the, the magic here and the trick here is that this, this is going to be uh, the, the first element always, yeah, all the time. break if it's not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's the same as a cast. No, yeah, it will break if it is not, but I am, I am doing something about it. I, I'm actually uh, using asserts at the end of, uh, I'm not showing them here because, okay. but I- We have a container of which has a built-in assert. We should make a macro for that because it's a, a reoccurring pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we are, we are doing something about it because yeah, we, we are, we cannot simply assume that it's going to be the first member, but it is going to be the first member. Otherwise, the, the code is going to, to break, of course. And we are trying to ensure that uh, using assert 
uh, static assert at the end of, uh, of these stroke declarations. I'm not showing this here because it, I think this is a, a bit out of the scope, but, um, but yeah, okay. Well, the thing is that uh, we can use container off to get a pointer to the flexible structure, and through that pointer, now we can access the flexible array member that we had previously left out of the equation with the use of stroke group. Okay, that, that's, the <laughs> that's the point. Okay, so, so yeah, ah, basically that's, the, that's what we did. And uh, case number four is basically the same as case number three, but in this case is on stack. So here we have our code. Um, and yeah, so it's basically the same, just uh, we, we have uh, our flexible array member, we, we have an implicit union, um, and in these cases, well, uh, people, people use this, this sort of code when they know at compile time how big uh, the, the flexible, or how many elements in, or items the flexible array member is going to contain at runtime. So this is, um, this is kernel code. And I'm going to show you the patch for this. So, well, we have our flexible structure. Then, uh, within within the fun the fun bind uh, function, we have uh, our our composite structure on stack. And from this, we can infer that uh, well, uh, people is expecting to have two elements in the flexible array. Oh man! Oh, this laptop. And this is a patch. In, in the case of, of code on stack, uh, we, don't, we don't have to use true group and, and the container of uh, trick. Uh, we have other, other couple of helpers that actually they were, one of them in the case of uh, uh, define raw flex was originally named just define flex. And it was created to, for the cases exactly like this, where, where people, uh, uh, they, they knew how big uh, the flexible array member was going to be around time. So they, they didn't want to, to allocate heap space, uh, because what, what is the point? They could just create a helper for this and, and allocate uh, all the space they, they need uh, at build time. And, and well, in this case, we use the define raw flex to, uh, to fix this, uh, this warning. So with define raw flex, I, I'm, I'm going to go quickly uh, through define raw flex. We, we have, uh, in this case, that is our flexible structure. And CMD is going to be uh, the, a new object, which is going to be a pointer. And well, entry in this case is going to be our flexible array member, and we have just two elements for, for that for that flexible array member. Yes, King. So for this case actually the structure found yeah found at the mean bind entry, that structure is after the structure found at mean bind rig that's so but that the <laughs> So that structure, the entry two, actually is only alias with the flexible array member in the previous structure, right? Yes. So why not just bind the flexible array with the structure, f the, the, the entry two, bind them together using the union? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Well, I, I don't know. In this case, I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no. To be more clear. Yeah, I, they are alias, right? Yes. Yeah, they are yes. alias. So that's, that's a union relationship. So we, yeah. we already provide the flexible, flexible array. We can use in a union, yeah, yeah as long as it, it is at so the that end. That should be more clear. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there, there are different approaches we can follow, of course. Uh, oh, well. So internally, Define Flex is using a union to do this, but you can't have an initializer for a flexible array in automatic storage. Um, and so what we have to do is bypass uh, the syntax checker on that, create a union with enough space, fill the union, uh, fill the variables we want with the initializer, and then create an alias for the complete memory region and cast it as the flexible array object so that the compiler believes the size of that object is the full union. It's really, really problematic, but we can do it in global uh, with an initializer and it'll have the right sizes. So it's a problem with automatic versus global storage. 
Okay. okay. Yeah, but 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 you were not asking about global global space, right? You weren't. This this is on stack. Yeah, but but yeah, case case is right. Yeah, I mean internally internally uh, these helpers uh, use uh, they use a union, but uh, but yeah, I understand what you mean that why instead of using the helper either if it uses a, if it uses a union or not, why not coding this differently? I mean there are different approaches we can we could follow. Uh, we can, we have found that. These are probably the, the most straightforward uh, approaches for those issues because we can apply them uh, for, it's a general approach. Otherwise, we will have to go case by case. And that is actually what, I, what I'm trying to avoid in this, for, for, uh, particularly for the case number three that I just explained. Uh, when, when, I was, when I was starting to work, on, I was working on this, I was just uh, trying to figure out how to fix all of this. I, I was really getting very over, over, overwhelmed because I was trying to, to fix this in terms or to figure out a solution in terms of refactoring a lot of code so that the flexible array members always end at the, as the last member in any number of nested structures, right? But that, that's a huge, huge task and uh, I will require to be an expert on, a, on every driver. So, yeah, it's not, uh, it's, not, it's not that simple. So this is the simplest solution I have found so far. So probably, uh, probably some of you could have a better solution. That'd be great. If you can tell me about it, uh, you, you are going to have a lot of credit for that. But, uh, well, okay, let's continue. Yeah, in this case, well, this is how, um, how we use this helper. And, and well, yeah, we, we can access the, the members through this newly created pointer to uh, to a flexible structure that is now uh, 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 clearly de defined at, uh, at compile time. And okay, and well, we have this declare row flex. I mean, I was I was telling that originally uh, there was only one one uh, one of these helpers define flex, and uh, but uh, after that, case realized that. Uh, we could actually uh, use these helpers and take advantage of the counted by annotations and at the same time initialize the counter member in the flexible structure. So now uh, he replaced the original define flex with define row flex. Define row flex means that the flexible structure uh, is not annotated with the counted by attribute. Um, for the for the flexible structures that are annotated, we use now the declare uh, flex helper, and that will that will initialize the counter at the same time. Okay, so here are some examples. If you are curious about this work, you can you can take a look at these commit IDs. And so some conclusions. Well, uh, after really really struggling and, and and being really frustrated about this problem, I I think I now have a, like a clear strategy on how to address. Thousands. I mean, I need to fix all of all of this if we want to enable this compiler option uh, in mainline. So this is something I've been doing this year, and, and yeah, well, uh, already a couple of, a couple dozen of these patches are already in mainline. So apparently, uh, maintainers are okay with this solution, which I really appreciate. And well. Now with these uh, with these fixes and others that are in Linux Next and are probably going to be merged uh, and, uh, during this uh, coming week, we are down to almost uh, 300 of those unique 650 warnings, and this accounts for uh, about 30 percent of the total 60,000 warnings. So, yeah, with these fixes, uh, I I effectively fix like uh, like 20,000 warnings, and. Um, Oh, stop. that's it. <laughs> Questions? Thank you. Are there any questions in the room? We've still got about five minutes. Oh, here's one. Would it help if you don't pull the count into the extracted header structure? Okay, can, you, can you repeat it? Uh, so, uh, in, in some cases, you extract uh, the um, the header of, of of the structure contained in the flex array, mm -hmm. and um, you also pull the count uh, into into that header, uh, probably just just in order to to, to preserve its its structure. But yeah. uh, you you basically don't need the counter if you don't have the flex array. There. Pro well. Um 
I would argue that probably uh, it might be used just to uh, to check if it resolves to zero and make sure that we we don't have we are not using a flexible array. Uh, so probably it 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 might be used, but just just to just to not make things more complex, I, I'm including that. Yeah. Um, in one of your very first slides, you showed a diff where you had like a U8 data flexible array, and you said it was like we should remove it. I didn't see what was wrong with it other than the fact that it may have been unused, but it was at the end, and it was like one of your very first slides. It had to be like slide three or four or something like that. By the way, this is not my laptop, and it's really funny. <laughs> So there was no semantic issue with the fam itself, okay. Okay, is one? Keep going, I'll let you or know. Just even before. You're getting there, you're getting there. The this one, yeah, that one? Yeah. I didn't immediately see what was wrong with it, but if it's just unused, then, no, next one? Or maybe previous one? I don't know what direction we're going. Oh yeah, just forward. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so that one? Just unused that we just got rid of it? Just because there is no instance of code allocating heap space for that. I mean, it's not used at all. However, however, there are, uh, there are middle objects of the type of this structure, but they are using the other members, not the flexible array. Gotcha. Yeah, the header was the not at end, so then I was thinking that itself was, was a warning, but... No, 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 no. Okay. This is part of the patch, the solution only. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Thank you. Oh, Julia, last question? We have time for a last question. No, no, go ahead. Um, so I was just wondering about the counts. Um, what's the status of counts? What percentage of counts have you found? Uh, I don't have metrics for the counts. I mean, uh, you mean for the for the counted by annotations? Yeah. You mean? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I don't have metrics for that at this moment. So uh, that's something that we've been doing between Case and I. So uh, I mean. I, I currently don't know, uh, but what I can say is that as I am fixing these issues, I've been running into flexible structures that need account and uh, that need to be annotated, and I and I I'm at the same time I am fixing that. Yeah. So are most of them hard or are most of them easy? Or? Mm, there are some, of course, some simple cases, but there are some difficult, uh, more complex ones. I actually uh, I, I wrote a, a blog post about how to do this counted by annotations, where I explained the, the most uh, complex scenarios, and uh, I can I can point you to that. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, thanks.